Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I'm going to issue some words of caution if you are planning on buying a pre-made bug out bag system. We're going to talk about the main drawbacks of doing so and why it's far more important that you build your own bug out bag. So for many of my more seasoned subscribers, this is not going to be anything new for you. You're already fully aware of the importance of familiarity with your gear, having good quality gear that you're out there using in the field on a regular basis. So I'm hoping that this video may open the door to some broader mass appeal. So I tend to spend a bit of time on other social media feeds, including Instagram. And Instagram has a lot of ads nowadays. And oftentimes I'll get these ads showing up on my, in my news feed for these really gimmicky uh, new pre-made bug out bag systems that they have out there on the market. And I can tell from a quick eyeballing of the gear that it's mostly cheap crap. What they'll probably have in some of these kits is two or three items out of the 50 odd items that are in there that kind of stand out that have a brand name and they'll emphasize those in the pictures and in the descriptions to really lull somebody in and make you think that this gear is actually high quality. And of course they might package it in some nifty innovative system and that's really what you're paying for. You're paying for the platter. To me it's like one of those uh, veggie trays. You know, you can go and you can buy all the veggie trays separate and it's actually cheaper and you get more than if you were to buy it in the platter. But you see a lot of people have it in their mind that, oh, if I buy the complete kit together, I'm actually saving money. But in the case of 90% of these pre-made bug out bags and, and survival kits, that's not the case. You also notice when they do the photo spread where they show all the gear laid out, it, it reminds me of those multi-tools where they say a hundred tools in one when the reality is there's two or three tools that you're going to use and 70 things they just made up. Like you can use it as a paperweight or you can use it as a self-defense tool by throwing it at a marauder with a great precision and they might even show a demonstration of that. And the whole point with this advertising is quick, quick because they don't want people to think too in depth about all the different contents of the kit. They want you to be enamored with the packaging and not focus at all about the quality of the product at hand. So the number one reason why you should avoid this stuff at all costs is cheap gear. Now let's go and let's look at a pre-made bug out kit on amazon.ca. So bear in mind this is in Canadian dollars. So this first one here is called the emergency zone urban survival bag and emergency disaster kit 350 bucks. Okay, actually this is that's the four person. Let's go to the two person. So what are we getting here for $280? Remember, the bug out roll that I sell is right now it retails between $160 and $199, depending on what sort of coupon codes you're getting. That's $199 Canadian. That's just for the roll. I always get these comments. Why is it just for the roll? Why don't you include all the stuff in it? The reason why is simple. If I was to make an actual bug out roll survival kit and sell it, it would cost a lot of money because I don't sell cheap crap. I refuse to put people in a situation where they're going to have to rely on gear that's not going to work. If the crap hits the fan and you happen to have something which you purchased from me, I want to make damn sure that that thing is battle tested and it's going to perform when you need it to. So the reality of the situation is in a year from now, when I have built up the store a little bit with all of the high quality gear that I want, I may build a pre-made bug out roll system and those items will be significantly discounted, but it's not going to be cheap. It's going to be top quality gear. It's going to be an elite bug out bag system. And a lot of people are going to complain about the price and they're going to end up getting some cheap crap like this. We're going to go over, which is intended for one use only. And that's the thing. Everything that I retail at CanadianPreparedness.com is built to last. It's not something that you just put in the closet or put in the trunk of a car and forget about it. It's something that you use on a regular basis. So getting back to this here. So within this kit, you have an emergency tube tent, which is really just a big plastic a bag, big garbage bag. You have a prepare for life book would probably cost a dollar to make. The, the real money here is probably in the radio, which they probably 
got from some Chinese factory for five bucks. Probably receives AM, FM, possibly weather band, but I doubt it. Looks like they got some cheap paracord knockoff. I'm sure it's not real parachute cord built to military specifications. They got some cheap no-name duct tape, some disgusting SOS emergency food ration bars, which uh, if you haven't seen Urban Prepper's three-day survival test on those things, you should go and watch it. By the end, I don't think he could even stomach it. It kept him alive, but it was an exceptionally grueling experience. This is the thing that irritates me the most about these, is this emergency purified drinking water. Now, I get it that if you have water in plastic bottles, uh, it's not going to keep as long. And there's going to be uh, toxins within the plastic that leach in there. And there's going to be bacteria that start to form. And the idea with these Mylar emergency uh, purified drinking water bags is that uh, they're somehow, they're, they're less porous. So... The water is not going to be contaminated uh, as quickly. But I was going to be reviewing a product for uh, some people at one point, which was a different kind of water. And they did all kinds of studies on these things to show that what the companies usually say is not entirely true. So you're just as good to go out, buy a few bottles of water, cycle them out every few months and do it that way instead of paying 280 bucks for this garbage. Now let's move on here. So we got the emergency poncho once again, a glorified plastic bag. We got the, some really generic looking gardening gloves. Very vintage. It looks like the design hasn't changed since 1970. They got some cheapo multi-tool, which we all know you can get for three bucks at your local uh, big box store. Uh, a couple emergency sleeping bags, as they call them. Emergency sleeping bags. Yeah, sure. Uh, we all know that those are mylar bags and space blankets. You can get those for a buck each. A couple masks, uh, face masks, which for all we know aren't even... It looks like they're 3M brand, so they may actually be N95. Hopefully N99, but I highly doubt it. Some other basic toiletries, which you should have anyways. They have the audacity to throw a roll of toilet paper in here. And, and see, this is what I mean about this. Like, I can't see them making this stuff for individual consumers... Maybe they're selling this crap to government agencies that are going to hand it out because anybody in their right mind which should not be spending 280 bucks on this kind of kit. Uh, they got a deck of playing cards, some glow sticks. I guess they're planning on ringing in the uh, apocalypse with a rave party or something like that. Uh, some really cheap toothbrushes. Uh, looks like a water bladder in the back there. And all of this, of course, is encased in this $10 backpack made in a Chinese sweatshop. So that's what you're getting for 280 bucks, folks. You're getting 60 bucks worth of cheap crap, which is only gonna last once. It's gonna taste disgusting, and it's probably not gonna keep you alive. And you don't even have a fixed blade knife in here. You don't even have a fire ignition source. The best thing you got, well, actually, maybe you got some matches in that little whistle compass thingamajigger there. Uh, so you got your navigation there as well. But the bottom line is you could go and buy all this stuff separately and buy better quality stuff for half the price of this. So the, the you're paying for the platter here. You get what I'm saying? Now let's go check out another one just to be fair. So this one looks a little bit better. Uh, looks like they put a little bit more thought into this one. 300 bucks. Okay, you get a slightly better Coyote Brown... Uh, backpack which looks like it might be some kind of nylon fabric certainly not gonna be any kind of Cordera I doubt just by looking at it it may be but it doesn't really look like it the bag looks much better though than the last one some of the items that stand out in here so you have some name brand Gorilla Tape you have some generic looking head torch uh, mostly generic stuff you know all stuff which is uh, which is going to independently retail for for under you know between a buck to five bucks maximum so once again you're paying for the platter they got the emergency drinking water there just to insult your intelligence uh it looks like a first aid kit which has a reasonable amount of organization some weird looking fm am radio i mean if you're gonna buy a kit like this and they're not even gonna throw in a radio which has weather band. Never mind shortwave. You should have a shortwave, some walkie-talkies or something. 
I mean, this is ridiculous. Now, let's look at this one. This one's a little bit cheaper, 140 bucks. This is probably the best deal we've seen so far. So this is the Tactical 365 Operation First Response Stage 1 3 Day Bug Out Survival Bag. Well, isn't that a mouthful? They managed to fit every possible keyword into one title. I wonder why they did that. And look, this has 12 reviews. So all of this stuff that you can get at your local drugstore minus the canteen. Actually, you know what? They probably got that there too. And you get this really cheap backpack. It's still better than the other ones. So anyways, I think you get the point with that. The thing I like about the bug out rule is the open source aspect of it. Meaning that you can organize it however you like. We provide you the platform, which is made of very high quality materials. It's overbuilt. It's built to military standards. And you're not locked in to any sort of system of organization. Now, I understand some people want that. But the fact is, you don't want that. Because the second reason why you should avoid this stuff is because it's not customized and suited to your specific environment to your skill sets, to the needs of your group. These are made to be very general and universal in scope. They are not designed for you. When you build a bug out kit, it should be designed for you in your region. The style of knife that you are gonna need depending on the climate you're in. Are you gonna need a saw? Are you in a winter climate? Is there a lot of bugs in your climate? What sorts of food sources are available within your region that you could collect? What sorts of tools are you going to need to do that? Now, the third reason why you should avoid these bags is that they're not intended for regular use. They're one hit wonders. And because of that, you're going to lack familiarity with your gear. When people talk about, oh, I keep a bug out bag in my closet or in the back of the trunk and they never actually use the gear, I'm baffled by that because you should be using that gear on a regular basis because you're going to gain a familiarity with the gear you're going to be able to work the bugs out of that gear. If there was any problems with it, you would know over time. You would find out what works best for you. So start to build a system with reliable gear. And it's going to cost money to do this. But the fact is, it's going to cost you a lot more to have to buy the wrong thing 50 times than buy the right thing one time. One of the last problems with these bug out bags is you'll commonly hear, well, it's better than nothing. And while I would rather have it than nothing at all, if you are relying on this and it prevents you from actually building a kit which is going to work, then it is worse than nothing because it's giving you a false sense of security. And in doing so, it prevents you from building a good quality kit which could not only save your life but allow you to thrive under those challenging conditions. If you are looking to buy a pre-made bug out bag, the chances are that you don't own a lot of survival equipment in the first place and that you're only planning on using it in an emergency. And that's indicative of not many skills, not much familiarity, not much experience using this kind of stuff. So to think that you can rely on the cheapest of the cheap when you don't have you don't even have the sense to not buy this kit in the first place is asinine. So if you never have to use it, the fact is you do not know how to use it. You won't survive with the best gear, much less the cheapest gear. All right, so let's review one more of these bags here. So here we got another one. This one is the four person premium family emergency survival bag. So let's break this one down. So my first impression here is that the gear is of slightly higher quality so they do have some mountain house food in there which is good uh, that is easily like if we're looking at let's see how many uh, packs of mountain house they got 24 packs of mountain house that is going to retail for around 240 bucks it's easily between 10 and 12 bucks uh, for some mountain house so we're, we're getting close to a thousand already with the 240 so that's things are looking pretty good uh, this emergency uh, Daytrex drinking water, I'm not sure what that goes for. I'm guessing maybe 50 cents a pack. Let's be generous and we'll say it goes for that. Uh, the other things that stand out here is the Mora knife, which is probably a 20 to $30, maybe $40 knife, but I'm leaning towards uh, $30. That's retail. Uh, but Mora makes a good knife. Uh, they make good quality knives 
and it's definitely uh, a, a reliable knife to have in there. In fact, if I made a similar kit like this for the bug out roll, uh, Mora would be a knife I would consider. Now, in terms of their lighting options that they have here, you can see these flashlights. Uh, these are the cheap generic flashlights that you find on Amazon for 10 bucks. These are the ones which are marketed as, you know, the next best thing since the military and uh, this technology was leaked uh, for civilian use and now civilians have access to this space age technology. These are the advertisements that are used to market these things. They're about 300 lumens. They get marketed as being over a thousand lumens. They're really not, but they'll do the job, but they're pretty cheap and they're pretty unreliable. You got some glow sticks, uh, which I've never been a fan of glow sticks. I really don't see the point in carrying around something like that, which is just going to burn out. You're better off carrying around some extra batteries, in my opinion, for your flashlight. You have some lanterns there. Can't say too much about these lanterns, uh, aside that they're probably... I think uh, actually Living Survival did review something that looked like that. I'm not sure if it's the same one. I'm sure they're going to work, but they're certainly no more than maybe 15 bucks a pop. So the flashlight system here, and if you include the glow sticks, we're looking at about 50 bucks maximum. And that's being very generous. Uh, the Instafire fire starter it looks like we've got four packets of that. I'm presuming. It's going to retail at around 10 bucks a pack, so that's about 40 bucks there. So what are we up to now? We're up, we're at, we're at 240 with the Mountain House. So we're at about 320 bucks. Uh, these emergency blankets are negligible price. They're probably two bucks each, and that's retail. So that's going to bring us up to what 300 and uh, what were we at 320? So 330, we'll say generously. Uh, we got the Mora, so that's up to 370. Some wipes, it's five bucks, 375. Uh, some a cheap first aid kit which probably honestly retails for 10 bucks so that brings us uh, let's just let's give them 400 just to be nice we got some whistles which probably retail for two bucks so we're going to keep it at 400 bucks because we were pretty nice now we also have that uh ferrocium rod down there which can't discount that that's going to be another five bucks and what else do we got here okay so we got this stove system uh, the the stove there, I can tell you, it's one of those uh, kind of, sort of, not really wood gas stoves, but it allows the, the fire to breathe, so you can create uh, a better, a smoother burn and concentrate the flame a bit more. Those are going to retail for around 30 bucks. You can find them online here for 30 bucks, that particular stove. The pots, I'm guessing, will give them 25 bucks. It looks like a, a knockoff of uh, another more popular brand. I can't remember the name of it offhand. And the Sawyer water filtration system is around 20 bucks. So haven't even added it up yet, but we're at about 500 bucks. We have the collapsible bowls. We'll say each of those is 10 bucks each to be generous. That brings us up to 550 bucks. Now the backpack looks like it's a relatively decent quality. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a larger pack. It looks like it's probably a 60 liter backpack, maybe a little bit more. And yeah, I mean, it actually looks like a decent backpack, but it's really hard to tell what the tightness of that weave is, uh, what the density of the, the Cordera is. It may be like, a, it might not even be a Cordera. It might just be a really strong nylon fabric or something like that. But it looks decent. I mean, it looks a reasonable build quality. It looks quite functional. And it doesn't look... Like it stands out a lot. So what we've counted here is, is 500 bucks. Now, you know how I am about uh, business and running businesses. And so there's clearly a 100% markup here in terms of the price. At the at very least. And that's not taking into account the actual dealer costs for what these things are. Remember... I'm talking about the actual retail cost of this stuff. The stuff that it cost them, if we really wanted to uh, do the math, would probably be closer to 300 bucks. So really you're looking at like 150% markup on this. Now once again, you're paying for the service, you're paying for the platter of them to pull this stuff together so it saves you the work of doing so. But if you look at this happy family right here, I don't really think they understand what they've gotten themselves into because now, they're going to have to cook these 12 packs of Mountain House over this little cooker here, which is going to take a long, 
long time. It's going to take easily 15 minutes in some cases to bring one of those things of water to a boil, uh, depending on, you know, the wind conditions and etc. And of course, you're going to have to do that for each one of those packages of food. So you're going to be doing a whole lot of cooking. And I'm not sure if the water that they provide uh, takes that into account. Now, the good thing with Mountain House is that it doesn't require a lot of water to use. It only requires two cups per package. And I should add that it is the best tasting freeze dried food out there, which is why we carry it at our store, CanadianPreparedness.com. And the Sawyer water filtration system is reliable. I can't say anything bad about that. So they have those two things going for it. They got the Mora knife in there. But is it worth $1,000? Absolutely not. This is a very, very overpriced kit. If they were to price this at $500, I would be willing to turn a blind eye to that. But the fact that they're trying to retail this for $1,000, uh, knowing what I do now about retail markups and, and trying to be a small business that actually has integrity and sell people good gear, I can tell you that this is a ripoff. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, it's a ripoff, you know? Like anybody who knows anything about prepping gear would look at this and would look at the price point and say, wow, that is a total ripoff. So be careful with what you, you know, with what you invest in. Now, granted that the two person one, it, it's half of everything. So it really is, it's an equivalent ripoff really. Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is. I forgot to factor in the price of the backpack, which, you know, could retail for somewhere between 60 to 80 bucks. So I forgot to add that in there. So if we tack that on to our price, and even if we're really generous about the suggested retail price of all this stuff, 600 bucks compared to the $1,000 selling point, that's a huge margin. And remember, we're talking about retail. We're not talking about dealer prices. So dealer prices, they're making a killing off these things. And the sad thing is here is that there's 35 reviews from Amazon.com who are really satisfied. Oh, it's a great survival kit, blah, blah, blah. All people who don't know what they're doing. And it's sad because for that $1,000, they could have gotten a lot of really high quality gear. I'm talking like really good gear. For a thousand bucks, man, I might do a video about building a thousand dollar bug out bag. Because if you build a thousand dollar bug out bag right, man, that is going to be top notch. Top notch. And you're going to have everything you need for a thousand bucks. And it's going to be good. It's not just going to be a bug out bag. It's going to be your everyday go out into the woods whenever you want and use it for a lifetime bag. That's what it's going to be. And that's what I aspire to build with the bug out rule. I don't plan on making a platter where I'm going to inflate the price of everything just because I pull it together for you. Quite the contrary, I plan on doing like the subscription boxes do and lowering the price. Because if you're buying all of this stuff, it, you're kind of buying it bulk in a sense. So you should get some of those savings passed on to you. Now granted, I have to put it all together and I have to ship it to you, but that wouldn't take me that long to do this. I mean, I know what I'm doing. I, if I have all the gear, once I've amassed all of the gear that I'm currently amassing to do this for the bug out roll, it's not going to be hard for me to do. So the actual labor that goes into uh, packaging all this stuff for you, that's not worth five, six hundred dollars that you're trying to charge here. I mean, it's worth a couple hundred bucks, you know, when you factor in all of their overhead and, and all the rest. And maybe you could even say it's worth 300 bucks because, you know, they got bills to pay, right? But it, this is looking a little too greedy in my mind. If you want to check out the new bug out rolls, the new pricing is going to be up. It's 169 for the pack roll system, which is the non-modular system. And it's 179 for the modular system. And the modular system is going to allow you to uh, upgrade the modules in the future. So if you wanted different modules in the future, uh, it comes with two types of mods, as is the Cordera and the vinyl mods. But in the future, we are going to offer other module choices so there's some flexibility there plus it's made of that nice 600 denier cordura 
with the PVC backing. So go check it out. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.